The Oscars were last night, in case you had anything at all better to do and you missed it, like so many other people. This year, there was no host. Kevin Hart was supposed to be the host, but he was fired for a thought crime that he committed nearly a decade ago. The scene was otherwise the same, though, with celebrities seizing their chance to spout banal political messages to the dwindling part of the country that actually cares what they think. A few decades ago, the Oscars was a pretty big deal, a huge ratings getter on television. Now, the show might be irrelevant, but it's certainly eye-opening. Lisa Booth is a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Voice. She watched last night, Hi, Tucker. and she joins yes, us with you're, her you're very welcome hey, for that. <laughs> Well, yeah, Tucker, as I'm oh. sure you're shocked, the Oscars took a political turn, an anti-Trump term. I know, turn, I know that is very shocking to you. 29.6 million people tuned in. Everyone's lauding this ratings increase, but what they're not talking about it is it's still the second worst rated Oscars in history. Last year was the worst they have ever seen. So I want to take you through some of the political nonsense that we saw last night. Let's start with, start with Spike Lee talking about a mobilization for 2020. Listen to this. The 2020 presidential election is around the corner. Let's all mobilize. Let's all be on the right side of history. Make the, make the moral choice between love versus hate. Let's do the right thing. You know I had to get that in there. So, Tucker, he was not alone. You also have actor Javier Bardem piling on, going after President Trump's immigration policies. Listen to this. No hay fronteras, no hay muros que frenen el ingenio y el talento. Here is also Chef Jose Andres piling on as well. One that gives a voice to the voiceless reminds us of the understanding and compassion that we all owe to the invisible people in our lives, immigrants and women who move humanity forward. So Tucker, as you can see there, there are a lot of swipes at the president. You think at some point they might realize that alienating 63 million Americans might not be the best ratings play here, or the fact that Americans really don't want to be lectured to by a bunch of smug hypocrites. I don't know how people can stay mad that long. <laughs> I forget I, what I'm mad at. <laughs> so they have amazing, well, persistent anger, I we, would say. We, we can't have <laughs> anything believe. nice anymore, Tucker. Everything's so poisoned no. by politics. I just want to have a good time, mm. watch something fun, and everything's just got to be poisoned, unfortunately. So. Oh, yeah. That means you're immoral, Lisa. But thanks for joining <laughs> us anyway. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tucker. Author and columnist Mark Stein was also watching last night and joins us. So, Mark, you got to say of the Hollywood people, I mean, they do care deeply. Wouldn't you say much more deeply than, than a person like you cares? Yeah, they they do. They care. And that was the message. They cared at length. Uh, that that guy you had on now uh, saying that movies give a voice to the voiceless. I have to laugh. They did that all night long. They say movies give a voice to the voiceless shortly before they cut off the microphone of the best sound editing guy uh, because his co-winner has gone long on her speech. So it was uh, literally <laughs> hypocritical as we watch. You know, Lisa said she just wanted to have fun. You, you mentioned a few, a few decades ago, the Oscar shows uh, were a big deal and they were conventional uh, shows of that type. They've gotten rid of everything. They've gotten rid of the song and dance. They've gotten rid of the jokes. They've gotten rid of the host. They got rid of the gowns. The gowns were frumpy last night, except for Billy Porter in that, uh, what did he call it? A, a, uh, a tuxedo dress. That was the only time I felt the rustle of taffeta. So he was the only one I would have asked to dance with at the post-Oscar ball. Uh, they got rid of the thank yous to Harvey Weinstein, which uh, constituted 40% of the Oscar time of the last 20 years. Uh, and all that left was this pious, earnest virtue signaling, um, uh, which I think they, they think because they bottomed out and they got a little bit of an uptick of an audience, that in fact they now have a core audience that actually doesn't want fun uh, uh, to go back to Lisa's word, uh, that is just much more comfortable with the pious, earnest, boring virtue signaling and is, and is happy just to stick with that for its own sake. Because for some reason, but I wonder, uh, it makes them feel good. Do they, I mean, Hollywood in some ways is over. It's diminishing in its power and its reach. The technology has been surpassed by mm -hmm. others. But I wonder if 
they're go- kind of just going through the motions. Like, this is what you have to say if you're a director or an actor. You ha- have to make these noises. Or do you think they still believe them? Well, I think Spike Lee certainly does. He, he walked out uh, because uh, whatever it's called, Green Room, Green Door, whatever it is, Green Room won the best picture. Uh, I think he does actually mean it. I think most of the other people reading glassy-eyed from the teleprompter, one thing is fascinating to me, the world's greatest actors and actresses, they can play any role on the planet, but they can't read a dull, teleprompted, leaden piece of prose uh, about giving voice to the voiceless and put any life into it. They're just awful prompter readers. You would clean up at the Oscars for best prompter reader, Tucker, way ahead of Julia Roberts or any of these other stars. They just can't do it. Uh, And so I think they are just going through the motions and they're doing it because this is just part of what it means to be an actor. 20 years ago, uh, you had to give Harvey Weinstein a back rub when he asked you up to his hotel room. Now you just have to genuflect to transgender rights or whatever is this year's fashion. They're just doing what they uh, need to do to keep themselves in work. Did anybody say anything artistic, which is to say unexpected, interesting, against the grain, radical, or was it all just approved thoughts? Uh, No, it was approved thoughts. And again, to go back to uh, Lisa's word, fun, um, what was interesting to me was that there was no wit or charm or even any sense of joy or pleasure uh, in the event, that was what was uh, that was what was palpable almost. Even when you listen to someone like Spike Lee, you sort of sense the grievance. A guy who's white getting a statuette for making a movie, and he somehow feels obliged to talk about America's genocide of its native people, is is sort of oddly trivial. If you seriously believe it's genocide, it's actually trivializing of that. Uh, uh, to connect it to you getting some crummy award uh, for best adapted screenplay. I don't think there's anything serious, serious about this. They've, they've taken out all the joy, all the charm, all the wit, all the fun, and they haven't found anything to put in its place. Wow. I don't even, they, they, they've lost the power even to offend me. <laughs> that's that's Sorry, how banal that, that's, it is. That's a downer, uh, Tucker. I I should Uh, do eight bars of hooray for Hollywood like the old days, but we don't have that anymore. (laughs) Mark Stein, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks.